Hey everyone, it's Ollie from Mashup Games, and welcome back to the series where I go through the development of making my first big game in Unity. As of now, the game is currently codenamed Fantasiege, a medieval fantasy tower defence game where you build your dungeon defences to fend off waves of heroes. Last video, we had added a main menu, some more in-game UI parts, an end boss, and a debug console. And this month, we've got some pretty big things to go over, so let's get into it. After I had finished the last devlog, I had realised there was something I did that I forgot to include in the video, and that was a pause menu. During the game you can hit the escape key, and this pause menu comes up looking like it came out of a PS2 game. Not very interesting, but I thought I'd quickly mention it first before I go into anything else. Now one of the big things last video was the main menu, and the nice transition between rooms that I implemented. So on top of that, I added an options menu into the second room of the main menu. Though I can't really call it an options menu when it only has one thing, and that thing is toggling the full screen which I haven't actually tried out yet to see if it works, I just thought I'd add it in so I could add more options in the future. Some quick little changes, or bug fixes, I would like to say to make it sound better, was resetting the time back to normal between rounds. Because if you had the time on anything else than one, then when the round ends it would still be that time, so I just had it reset to one after the round was finished. I also realised that the night hero was looking a little dark compared with the other entities, even though its sprite had quite a light grey colour. This is because I had a separate light in the scene only for entities, and well the night model wasn't exactly marked as an entity, so that was a quick fix. On to one of the big changes now, and this one was requested by quite a lot of you. At the moment minions could be placed in any room, and there wouldn't be any limit on how many minions or what type of minions you could place in what room. You could cram all your minions into one room and then not only would that room be almost impassable, but also every other room in the dungeon would then become obsolete. So here's what I did. When you click on the minion to place, it sends a message to all rooms in the dungeon to display their capacity. The capacity of each room is then displayed on their respective floors, and the capacity is a sum of all the minions in that room. Each minion has a certain weight to their capacity value. If the room is full, or cannot hold the currently selected minion, then their number is turned red. Once the minion is placed, then all rooms hide their UI. Simple as that, yet it adds quite a lot to the gameplay. It also allows the option to have upgrading rooms as a mechanic in the future. Last episode, we added the end boss. This boss monster is meant to be the player's lifeline. When the boss dies, the game ends. So the game could do with a game over screen. Right now, it's a simple black tinted UI panel with the text Game Over on the top, and there are two options, Retry Round or Exit to Menu. I wanted to include a retry round in there, because I thought it would be unfair if a player gets so far in the game then has to start over because of one bad placement or something similar. So the retry round would be a chance to try again. Obviously this wouldn't be infinite, but I would probably give the player free retries in one session, and the button actually does nothing for the moment, but that will be programmed in either next month or the month after. I will also snazz up this end screen in the future because right now it's just a bit boring. Talking about boring, the only hero you can fight is a knight hero, which isn't very fun gameplay and doesn't allow for different tactics or anything. So I spent some time adding some more heroes to the game. First off is the Commoner, which is basically the same to the knight, except they have less health and attack power, but they move quicker. They also fight with a little wooden stick, which I might actually model to be a wooden twig or something, I just thought I'd stick with the cardboard for now for time's sake. So we now have two melee heroes, but they don't tend to do well against the skeleton, as a skeleton can hit them from a range with their bonerang. So there is a need for a long range hero, and this hero is the archer. I tried to model their hats to be paper cones, and they currently don't hold a weapon, but when close enough, it looks like they throw arrows at their target. The throwing is pretty bad, but for this episode I just wanted to show the concept of the archer. With the minions, the initial idea I had for the gameplay is that once a minion dies, they actually die. And because you obviously want to avoid that, I implemented something that's quite popular in RPG games that might help with the solution. When a minion attacks and kills a hero, they gain experience points, which if they gain enough will then cause them to level up, increasing their health and attack power, which is shown in this neat little particle effect. While this is an improvement on the current system I had, which was none, it doesn't really fix the underlying design issue with the game. 
This will inherently make it so that the minions that are closer to the boss are much lower level than the minion closer to the entrance due to an imbalance of engagement in combat. So this leveling system may be completely scrapped for an entirely different system. But for now it exists and just makes the gameplay a bit nicer, even if by a little. Now last video, I also talked about player actions, which are actions the player can inflict on entities or rooms in the dungeon during raids. And I also said there would be some implementation of that in some form. So let me introduce you to the first player action of the game, fire. This is the only player action that exists at the moment, but it's a fun one. So during the game, if you click on the fire icon in the bottom left, you'd then see that your mouse would cast a red circle on the ground of the dungeon. When you click, any heroes within that circle will then start to burn. The fire lasts for a certain amount of time, and over that time would inflict damage on the hero. Either the fire runs out, or the fire ends up killing the hero. I really love this effect of the fire, and it was created by using a simple sphere mesh that I deformed to look like scrunched up pieces of paper, along with Unity's particle system. There might not be any new player actions in the next video or two, but this player action actually makes a large difference, as it makes the player no longer useless during the raids. And that's about it for this video. Lots of fun things done this month, and that's not even the exciting part of this month. So as some of you know, I graduated recently back in July, and since then have been looking for a job. And now, I've got one! I started my job as a junior game programmer, which was very exciting as I actually am earning money, but it also means that things will change for this channel. Due to the nature of the job, the Patreon that I announced last video had to be taken down, and all the ads on this channel has had to be disabled which is fine for all of you, if anything it's better for you, but it just means I won't be earning money from YouTube while I'm employed at the company. And if any of you have concerns for this game, then you don't need to worry, this game will still be developed and released at some point in the future, it just means that because I now have a job, I won't be able to work on the game as much. And I have some exciting videos planned for this channel, so make sure to keep an eye out. Also, only a small portion of you who watch my videos are actually subscribed, so if you haven't subscribed already and you've liked this video, then please make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps out. But that's it from me, this is Mashup Games, signing out.